What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, soul and body coach, Keisha Clark. Oh my goodness, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great, big, amazing world. Hello and welcome to Aligning Divine. I am your host, Keisha Clark. We are here on the Inspired Choices Network. How cool is it that we get to be on our home network, inspiredchoicesnetwork.com, and we also are streaming to over, I don't know, something like 55 plus platforms <laughs> all around the virtual world. So it's kind of cool, you guys, that we get to do this. And if you've never landed here before and it's your first time coming to play, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, you can come and join us in the chat room if you also want to do that. Just look for the word chat room on the top of any screen on the Inspired Choices Network. Uh, click on that, give yourself a name, and come on in, and you can play with us backstage. It's kind of fun. Um, sometimes the conversations are going right along with the show, and sometimes it's a totally different conversation. <laughs> and in either case, it's always fun. And if you have been here before and you're coming back to play, thank you so much. And in either case, I would love for you to know that I greatly appreciate you joining whenever and wherever and however you're doing it because you are a part of these conversations and I am so grateful for the contribution you be to these adventures and conversations and that is part of what I also adore about getting to play on the Inspired Choices Network. As we say, inspired is very much the case here. Um, I am Keisha Clark, <laughs> and I am a soul and body intuitive coach. I am also an intuitive living coach. I actually get the joy and the privilege and the pleasure of teaching people how to savvy their intuition and let it be their superpower, because you know what? It can be if you're willing to allow that. Um, I know that a lot of us are on the planet right now, uh, or a lot of us that are on the planet right now, we actually showed up here to do things a little different this time and keep more of that sense of our greater self uh, intact and have our awareness of that and play with that in a very different way here in our everyday life. And so that is part of the inspiration <laughs> ding, ding, for Aligning Divine. It is all about finding and having the joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. So we're bringing it all the woo into the world and into our everyday life. And if woo is a word that scares you, well, you could do a little clearing on that or you could pick a word that works for you. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Well, it's October uh, during the live time of the, the live taping of this show. And so uh, when I sat down with the show and said, hey, where do you wanna go? This topic popped and I gotta tell you, I was a little bit <laughs> I kind of had the tilted puppy dog head for a few minutes because I was like, really, really, we want to go here, you know? So, uh, because sometimes in my work, uh, the conversations can get a little twilight zoning, a little bit, you know, on the fringe there. And other times it's, you know, things that people have, are a little more familiar with. So if you're listening to today's episode, perhaps you are aware of something or you're ready to be aware of something with uh, beings who don't have bodies choosing to have bodies and how you might be a part or a contribution to that directly or indirectly. Um, so here we go. Today's topic is when beings want to be your babies. <laughs> it makes me laugh just to say the title. <laughs> um, so have you ever considered that a being that is a spirit, any non-embodied entity uh, <laughs> or maybe a few beings, uh, wants to be or want to be your babies. Hmm. Do you have any awareness of wanting to get to the, the planet through uh, the parents you chose? I do. <laughs> what about you? Uh, it's one thing to talk about or talk to your baby in utero. That's, we all hear about that. And people play music and read stories and that's awesome. Uh, don't stop doing that if you're doing that. And <laughs> it's quite a different thing uh, to actually talk to them 
before that? What, what if you could, what if you were to choose talking to them before they were in utero, before you were baking a baby body for them, <laughs> basically? <laughs> Are you open to that? Or would you be open to that? Or have you already been open to that? And you're, you're very familiar with what, what this topic entails. So <laughs> that is where we're gonna play this week. Um, it's a different kind of conversation. It is definitely nonlinear. It is not conventional. It is not based on uh, science or, or any particular story um, in the way that I want to play with it today. So it will also be very life changing and it will be, it will change the trajectory of both your life and the path of that being that you or those beings that you are engaging. So Let's dive in <laughs> to a conversation with beings beyond utero, so to speak. And uh, we're gonna be, we're, we're having some interesting conversations for this month of, of October, uh, kind of to celebrate the month of spirits. And uh, so let's just, let's just let go of all of our um, preconceived notions, if you will, of what pregnancy is supposed to be and how and when you can be pregnant or get pregnant and all of the stories and all of the conditions and all of the whatevers. Let's just suspend that. We'll, we'll hang that on the wall over there for a little while with the aprons. And let's just come to the table and, and look at this. Um, so one of my first questions when this topic popped was, uh, <laughs> what? I essentially was like, really? That was my first question, which I don't know if that's really a question, but anyway. And then where I went next was like, are people really ready to hear this? Do they really want to talk about this? I mean, this is a very different way to look at um, family planning, if you will. <laughs> so I just, um, I would just like to invite you to, uh, if and when you notice, you might be having any type of um, weirdness with this, just take a breath and ask, what do I really know about this that I haven't maybe considered I could know? So we, we talk about how we are energy all the time. Energy is the one thing that we all have in common. And it's, it's the first language. It's really the first form, if you will. Um, the, the vibration, the wavelength, the frequency, that we're all that. We all have that. And we have that particular frequency that we be or that we are functioning at at whatever point. So... Ah, when it comes to babies, when it comes to pregnancy and having babies, um, I, at a very early age, actually was very aware that I did not come here to be a baby maker this time. <laughs> I just knew that. And I was actually really okay with that. Um, so that's just always been in my awareness. And I marvel at those who have chosen that and have done that. And like, that they were willing and able to do that with their bodies. And that's kind of awesome because let's, let's face it, really, that's kind of how we have to do it here in the way that we've set things up. If you want to come play on the planet, you play here with a body. I mean, you can be here. There's tons of beings that are not, that are here without bodies, but if you want to experience that five sensory experience, you kind of have to have a body. And the way to get a body is, two beings or at least genetic material from two different beings is, is brought together to create a baby body for you to come into. That's the way the majority of us get to the planet anyway. So it's kind of popular. It's, it's very uh, large club, lots of members. And for so many, I don't know, for a long, long time, uh, one of the popular stories is pregnancy happens. Now, a lot of us, probably most of us listening to this conversation, we have a good idea of how it happens in a physiological sense. And of course, as per the way we play on this particular show, we are also considering or taking into consideration in the scope of this conversation that there is actually some things that go on uh, before that moment of conception, if you will. And that has to do with the energy. So what if we were willing to actually speak to the energy before we 
chose or <laughs> put ourselves in this position, pun intended, <laughs> to get pregnant. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm not just talking to the ladies here. This is guys too. Now, I know it's kind of different for guys because, you know, well, not to state the obvious, but it's just kind of different for guys. You have a different experience of this. And I know a lot of guys who are very connected to the experience, who very much like to be a part of the pregnancy, even though the the female <laughs> of the partnership or the female person, whichever female it might be, if you're in a, a double female relationship, um, is the one who's like letting her body do the work of creating and, and gestating the baby body. So before that, let's go to the before we're even mm, doing the, putting the recipe together, if you will. Um, are you even willing to consider that you could have an awareness of the beings that are kind of checking in or hanging out around you or with you um, who have a desire to be in your family, who, who have a desire to show up as your child or one of your children? And have you ever even considered that it is a choice? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people really like the story that pregnancy just happens and that something chooses you rather than you get to have a say in the process. Huh. Now, there are some cultural arrangements. There are some stories that, uh, hmm, how do I say this? Uh, that actually come from the perspective of uh, you don't have choice in it. It does just happen to you uh, or you're chosen by something or someone else and you should consider it an honor. And of course, I don't debate any of that. If that is what works for you and, and that is generative for you, run with that. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that I am aware of with people and with bodies and through many of the conversations I've had um, just in, gosh, lots of sessions with lots of people who have children and families and, and have come into some, I'm going to say some challenges, you know, with uh, what was I doing? You know, I, I, I wanted it at the time. And now I, what am I doing? I, I'm waking up wondering what the heck. Um, that doesn't mean that you made a wrong choice. It doesn't have to mean that you made a wrong choice. But there is this thing that happens when we enter any type of agreement or arrangement or situation without really um, choosing to be conscious about what we're choosing <laughs> at some point there usually inevitably is this phase of adjustment i'll say that's the word i'll use um and in some cases um it needs a recalibration it needs a like a reboot and then a reintegration and a reassimilation because relationship is not just you know a stagnant thing. I think, I think most of you were probably well aware of that at this point. <laughs> um, so for a lot of people, what I am aware of is that this, we call it this choice to have children. It's a kind of, for some folks, it's kind of distorted. It's not, it wasn't really an active choice. And I do hear a lot of parents, uh, not just people I'm working with, but just in my life, I've heard a lot of parents make comments that, eh, you know, it kind of makes you wonder, did you really want to have children? <laughs> you know, um, And so it feels like that's part of where today's conversation is inviting us to just have our awareness or have more of our awareness with is we might not have at the time chosen to connect with the consciousness of the being who was coming to be our child, but that doesn't mean we can't connect with it now. So there's one little piece of information. And if you are feeling that sense of 
<laughs> beings that are bugging you to be their incubator, <laughs> as I like to say. Um, the invitation is here for you to actually acknowledge that you have an awareness of that in the first place. You have an awareness of energies. You have an awareness of beings without bodies. And you might just have an ability to communicate with them and things could go pretty well if you, if you let them. Now, there's also a popular oh, idea, perspective, <laughs> philosophy, that our children choose us, right? Uh, that's probably the, the second one from uh, God chooses to give us children. And that's a popular story too. And those are great stories. They've worked well for millennia. So I'm not saying get rid of that story. What I am saying is that's, a, that's one perspective. You can look at it as this child chose me. Okay. And that's awesome if, you know, because they do. I mean, actually, are you even willing to be aware that they have choice too? And they're willing to make choices. Um, I had a, an awareness at a very early age that um, I was not able to get here through one of the people that I wanted to come play with. So I chose an alternate route. And it was really interesting to have that awareness. I think I was probably like nine when it really cognitively came through. Um, one of my relatives who I was very close to, uh, she was like my, so I had my great, great aunt and uncle, and then I have my mom and they were my three parents growing up for much of my growing up years. And um, when I was around nine, I may have been a little younger, but uh, my aunt was telling me some stories of how, you know, she did things in, in the old days. And she was telling me some of her adventures and she shared that she had this, uh, a miscarriage and she actually miscarried several times. She was never able to carry to term. Her body was not able to do that. And the moment, the second that she said it, the, the, like even before she finished the sentence, I had the image of my connection with her. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but like I got that energetic image of, and also felt simultaneously like a memory of being around her, being connected to her and having that uh, that sense of desire to participate with her as her child. But that was not able to happen. And I also was very aware in that moment that I was determined to get here. <laughs> so I found another way. <laughs> so of course I would do that. <laughs> That's just normal for me. So I'm quite tenacious in case you don't know that about me in many respects. And so I actually was very aware in that moment, my awareness of how I had actually made an agreement with my, who is my biological mother, the woman who is my biological mother, um, to come through in the time that I would be able to spend time with my great great aunt and uncle. And I did get to have a, a, a good bit of time with them. My uncle was here until I was uh, seven and my aunt was here until I was 20. And um, without a doubt, I know absolutely that I would not be who I am. I would not have been able to make the adjustments to this planet Earth playground that I was able to make if I had not gotten to spend time with them that I did, because it, it was vital to my being able to um, be consciously, cognitively capable of of what I needed to have my start in this, at this particular point in the, in the history of our, of our earth, of our collective experience. So it was really cool. I gotta say, um, and I haven't, I've only met a couple of other people who have actually talked, who've been willing to talk about that. <laughs> so it was, it was something that, you know, it always kind of had my attention and I thought, do other people have this awareness? Like, because people don't exactly talk about that a whole lot. But then we do have lots of stories about children who at very young ages, even toddler stage, you know, 
are making mention of other lifetimes of knowing, you know, seeing their parents before they were in their mommy's tummy, so to speak. And so these are little indicators, little, you know, things. If we're willing to notice this, if we're willing to acknowledge this, there is lots of, we could call it evidence here, that it is totally possible to communicate with the beings who desire to be a part of our physical family. So just a little just a little something for us to play with, a little light reading for your Wednesday afternoon. Um, <laughs> so on that, I think maybe we could take a breath and maybe take a little break here. So um, maybe you have an awareness of this and you might also be wondering, WTF, what I have ever chosen my parents for. <laughs> There's like no way, dude. Um, just notice what you notice might be coming up with today's conversation and invitation. And um I would love to be diving even more into this. And uh, let's just see where this conversation takes us when we get back from the break. You are listening to myself, Keisha Clark, here on Aligning Divine. We are on the home network of the Inspired Choices. And uh, we will be right back after this break. <laughs> Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815 880 8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of today's Aligning Divine where we are talking about when beings want to be your babies. <laughs> <laughs> that still makes me laugh just to say it. So it's very interesting what this stirs up, you know, <clears throat> the whole pregnancy thing and having babies thing and being a parent thing. That's kind of a big deal here on this planet, as it perhaps should be. It's kind of important that we, you know, pay attention to what we're choosing. <laughs> so um, we've made it this far. <laughs> And I don't know that uh, we had a hundred percent conscious choosing rate, but you know, maybe that's not really even required. So uh, we're talking about when beings want to come be in our family, when they want a baby body, when they want to be a part of our family in the three-dimensional world in this, uh, on this planet earth playground. And um, I, after I, had my experience of having that awareness when my aunt was sharing that story with me. It was just this, it, what it did for me was it shifted the energy quite massively. I think that goes without saying. And it allowed me to have a different presence with her from that moment on. And it allowed me to have more of my awareness of 
what we could do together and and what we could contribute to each other and and it was not about making her better than anyone else uh, because at the time my uncle had already left his body so at that point i had my aunt and i have my mom and and for a while i yes i had the interesting perspective of oh well i really came here to be with her and and i kind of wiggled on or wobbled on that sometimes but i was a kid you know i cut myself some slack uh you know but what i got to was this knowing that wow i i could actually this was actually possible and maybe there's a whole lot more to this having babies thing and how it happens and when it happens and who shows up uh, than what is just the popular belief around it. And then some years later in my adult life, <laughs> my adult years after I was 20, basically, um, <laughs> I'll let you, <laughs> you decide what that means, grown up, adult, all that. But I actually studied feng shui for a while, which of course is also massively fascinating to me on so many levels. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about in class for a while was, uh, now with feng shui, with this particular school of feng shui, um, it was really coming from uh, looking at like optimal or auspicious, that's the word that's used a lot in feng shui, auspicious dates to have a baby. And then there's planning that's done around that. And equally important is that you are in communication with the beings who want to be showing up. And the whole target of the date selection and the auspiciousness of the date is to bring that child into the world at the most optimal time. So like when all the components line up to the best of your abilities, um, when all those components line up in a way that it's going to create like the greatest possibility for that child, right? Um, so I thought that was really fascinating that they played with it in that way. And I, I know that that's not the only um, particular um, divination that that plays in that way or the school of divination that works in that way or looks at those kinds of things. So um, there's many cultures that have their way of making different selections. And what I really, where this topic really would like for us to go is um, looking at, even you know, if we weren't trying to manipulate it based on our linear thought process, what if we kind of open that door to have our exploration and our conversation or our communication, because it's a different kind of conversation, but our communication with these beings. Now, interestingly, beings don't, beings are not babies. The bodies are babies. And the beings that are with the baby bodies are learning things. They're, they're learning and imprinting and working with the whole way to be with a body and have their awareness and function from their organic state of who they are. That's that's quite a process, right? I think any of us who are here right now, we could say, yeah, there's there's a lot that goes into that. So before they choose to come here, or before we we help them get here, however you want to look at it, they're they're beings. They have consciousness. They're not two-year-old beings. They're not six-month-old beings. They're not 120-year-old beings. They're beings, they just don't have bodies at, the, at that moment. There are a lot of beings, just in case you weren't aware, there are a lot of beings who desire to have a body to come and play on this planet Earth playground. How do they do that? They have to get here through us, right? They have to have a body made for them. So, and if this sounds so wacky and it's just like, you know, if it's pushing your buttons, that's actually, I'm going to say yay. <laughs> if it's whirling your brain around a little bit, that's a good thing. It's okay. And you don't have to buy or believe or, you know, agree with anything that I'm saying. Um, this is just for you to play with, just for us to explore. And if you find some interesting awarenesses popping, awesome. And if you don't, that's cool too. You could, you know, 
how, whatever kind of conversation this brings up for you, this is what the invitation was really about. It's for you to query into your awareness. So beings, lots of things are actually really wanting to be here. Now, is every being without a body super conscious? <laughs> what is your awareness on that? <laughs> One syllable word, two letters, <laughs> no. <laughs> so you don't have to buy into the notion that just because you have beings or a being in particular that's communicating with you, that they are super conscious. Because if you look around the world, you might just be able to see some mm, physical expression that uh, there are many cases where beings just want to get here. They're not all concerned with changing the world. They're not all interested in bringing more consciousness to the experiencing of their life. Just the name of the game is getting here to get to, to start with, right? So there are a lot of beings out there who are looking for bodies. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to take over your body. It doesn't mean that they have permission or executive choice-making privileges unless you give that over. So this is one of the key pieces that um, the, the, the show and the group of beings that I play with <laughs> um, would like to be really out there it is that we have choice. Now, yes, some women show up with bodies that are what we would call extremely fertile. <laughs> and some women have bodies that are have a little more challenge with fertility. And other women's have bought other women has have bodies that are like, uh, no, we're not doing that this time. Mm -mm, not happening. Now, part of that has to do with the choices we made when we brought our recipe together for how we wanted to play this time. Um, I've never really myself bought into the idea that it was in any way part of my job to have children. And uh, my body was very clear about that. And interestingly, I created a body that would likely not have the most ease with pregnant me, we kind of, you know, co-created this, um, oh, I don't know, you could call it a, a, a partial, oh, what would that word be? Basically a way that we were going to reinforce the, the uh, not wanting to have reproduction going on for us this time. And I'm totally okay with that. So would you be willing to let people make that choice? And, and Maybe even let yourself make that choice to begin with, or let yourself have your awareness of what that choice was for you or what you have. See, this, what I get, one of the things that I get is pregnancy is one of those places that, this is fascinating because I haven't ever kind of gotten it this way. So pregnancy, all of these stories we have around pregnancy, are actually some of the things that are embedded in those stories are ways that we both separate ourselves from that oneness and we also give over our power of choice. For with of someone that have to do with um, giving over our power and, and choice to the baby, giving over our power and our choice to the medical staff, giving over our power and our choice to whatever members of the family who have done this before and they know better and blah, 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 blah. So this thing about choice is it's far beyond are we going to choose to get pregnant so much more than that to begin with. And, and then when we look at choice with regard and, and participate, we're taught to do. 
it's just not promoted. It's not the popular way. So part of what I get a sense of here, or one of the things I get a sense of here is that there could be so much more ease with both our personal process, our personal experiences of getting pregnant and having children, as well as with our ability to, oh gosh, function as a family and, and, and have our parenting experiences be so different as well as the experiences of the beings as they are being our children. Um, if we were willing to bring more of our awareness to the process, more of our consciousness to the process. Oh, golly, there's a whole lot here. <laughs> and I knew there would be, I was aware of that. So one of the first places to look is if you are one of the people who really wants to have a baby. Um, the first suggestion, the first invitation from, from today's episode is that you notice if, if it's something that you're fixating on. Is it something you feel like you're supposed to do? Uh, I've heard people say I was born to have children and that's cool. <laughs> More power to you. <laughs> I don't know that we need you to have 10, but you know, <laughs> if it's fun for you, that's awesome. Um, and what is, what is it that is giving rise to that? Like, where is that coming from? Is it your desire? Is it true for you that you really deeply desire that? Or is it something you've bought? And the reason that question seems really pertinent and, and feels really pertinent is when people are functioning unconsciously, it's more easy for pregnancy to happen. A being gets to come in. There's not a whole lot of communication. And it's like this, oh, what is it? It's almost like, um, oh gosh, what's the name of that? <laughs> I get the image of like blind dating, right? You just, you know, you're just going to take what you can get basically. Now, we do have all of these interesting, uh, I'll call them stories, around how, you know, soul groups tend to be families over and over again. They tend to just exchange roles in the larger family unit in the lineage. Um, I have seen that happen. Um, I've also seen like, some very interesting situations where it's like, I, I don't know how I connected with this group. Now, we know that the vibration has to be matching. We know that the components have to work together or it wouldn't happen in the first place. And it doesn't always have to be that, you know, super significant, oh, we're, we're a soul group or we're, you know, you don't have to get tangled up in that. Basically, you can look at, do the vibrations line up, right? Is there resonance here for this being and what they desire to bring and how they desire to play to, to be a contribution to you and your family? or not because there are cases where people have physical babies but those babies go somewhere else so just because people start out with babies doesn't mean that they're going to all stay together all the time hence we have things like children being offered for adoption we have things like um the original parent or parents are killed or uh, incarcerated or, you know, for whatever reason, there's a separation there and the child goes to a new home. And that too is a part of how beings get to where they are desiring or requiring to be. And it's not a cognitive thing. So the less we can try to make it a cognitive thing, the greater we will be able to have an awareness of what is appropriate at whatever time that thing becomes appropriate or necessary. Oh, this is like 
really interesting. <laughs> There's just so much interesting story we have around how babies get here. And, and even the audacity that we could, you know, fly in the face of convention and even suggest that beings and we could actually connect before the remote possibility of pregnancy and other in some way and actually maybe put our request on the table with each other figuratively speaking and then actually start to work together for how we could make that happen so are you willing to even know that it could be a collaboration? And if you're listening to this and you have already had babies, that doesn't mean that it's you've missed your window of opportunity. You can now actually connect with your children, connect with their consciousness in a way that can open this door of possibilities even wider for you if you want to do that. And if you don't, that's fine too. It does, however, change the approach. It, it really kind of nudges us into a different way of parenting when we're willing to have our awareness of that connection we can have with our children, with the, the beings who have shown up as our children. Because again, they're not, the being is not two or five or seven. The being is infinite and where their cognitive experiential process might be is at the that whatever chronological age level but their consciousness is still huge enormous infinite and there are ways that we can connect with those beings that could absolutely change what is possible for you with your children and as a family Okay, so another really, really, <laughs> we are, we're definitely in a very rich pot of stew today. So um, let's take another breath, another break, and just let this kind of filter through. Um, this, is, this is not about us having to have an answer for anything. We're really just talking about when beings want to be your babies. And we are at a time in our collective experience that this is actually more possible for us to consciously and cognitively and and willingly choose. So, oh, how about them apples? <laughs> and what did we know when we chose to come here in this time and space to play? Yeah. So I'm Keisha Clark, and uh, I'm so grateful that you're here having this conversation today. And we are on the Inspired Choices Network here on Aligning Divine, and we'll be back in just a moment. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark. For fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. Welcome back as we move forward into the final segment of today's episode of Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network and all around the virtual world. Um, 
And today we are talking about when beings want to be your babies. Oh my goodness. And just that line, just that sentence, um, it still stirs some interesting energies. Um, yeah, I, perhaps it's really time for us to shatter the illusion that uh, pregnancy just happens. <laughs> Uh, perhaps it's time for us to acknowledge there's actually way more going on. And it is miraculous. It is amazing. It is beautiful. And, 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 and all capital letters, bold print, underlined and highlighted. <laughs> you have a choice in the process. <laughs> you have a choice in the process unless you wanna give it up. If you wanna give up your choice, you can choose that. And you actually have a choice as a potent creator to be more consciously present in this process. And if you do not desire that particular experience at the moment that you're feeling the, the nudge, the pull, the call, the whatever, you can actually choose no. You can choose no. You can say not right now. You can say close for business. <laughs> you can say gone to a meditative retreat. Check me in two years. <laughs> you can say no. And I think that's one of the biggest surprises is that the big popular story is that you should be grateful if you can have a baby. Well, there are millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of beings, my friends. There are plenty of beings to be babies. <laughs> and there is plenty of space for you to have your life and choose that for you. And if you still want to be a parent, you can. Now, does that mean it's going to look like you actually conceiving it if you wait until you're 65? Maybe not. So, yeah, you might want to check yourself or check in with yourself. Can you, can you choose it that way? Would you want to choose it that way? Okay, cool. If you can, fabulous. Because you're, the, the beings who desire to come here and play with you don't have to come through you. <laughs> I think we would all be exhausted beyond measure if that was the only way we could do it, right? So when beings want to be your babies, what perhaps is really most appropriate at that point is for you to acknowledge your awareness of it and choose to communicate. You don't have to resist it. You don't have to have a reaction. It's not a being time trying to take control of your body. Oh my goodness gracious. Could we just put that story to bed? Unless that is really where you're choosing to function from. If that is what you're putting your attention on, and if that's what you're giving your choice up to, then yes, you are basically handing over your the use of your body for the beings to come along. Okay. Now, obviously, with regard to pregnancy, it requires that step of conception. Okay. And... <laughs> Um, you just might want to have some awareness of, wow, does this even work for me? So all the questions you might be having, and this goes for both men and women, all the questions you might be having around, do I want children? If I have children, am I even going to be able to bring them up? Am I even going to be able to, to take care of them? Do I need to you know, have X number of dollars in the bank before I even consider it? Uh, do I need to give up on the idea because it doesn't look like there's any snowball's chance in hell that I have of doing it? Whatever is going on for you. Let all of those reasons be secondary. It's really about what do you desire and what, what is the energy? What is it what does it create? If you tap into what it would create, if you choose it, what it, what that choice would create, obviously, other than having a baby, if you, if you choose that, 
but tap into both options for yourself. Tap into multiple options for yourself and see what's light. If you love children, but you really don't want to have any, then what if you involve children in your life somehow? Because those beings might not just need to or want to be literally your babies. They may just really desire contribution from you. And here's the interesting thing, guys. You can make that contribution even if they're not in a body. You can make that contribution by communicating with them. And that may be all that's required. Because when we are willing to communicate, well, acknowledge and communicate with beings who don't have bodies, you can actually, how do I say this? You can actually, uh, if we put it in terms of doing work, right? You can actually do the work of an entire lifetime, of, of multiple lifetimes in one communication, one time of connecting and contributing or exchanging energies and, and just asking them, what are the energies you require? And that is amazing about how we can work and be and play here. That that is even a way we can do it. But because there is no linear time when you can go beyond this conventional way we do things here, you can actually suspend the effect of time and connect with these beings and you can contribute to them in more ways than being a physical parent. And if you want to choose it, you can also contribute to them by being a physical parent, by being a way for them to get here. Because yes, there are that there is that whole aspect of the genetic um, components and the, the resonance of the genetic components to the energy they want to play with or play in. So, holy goodness, this is like, <laughs> this could be a whole series of conversations. And what it really feels like today's conversation just wanted to get our attention is that could we now begin to acknowledge more of the possibilities around bringing children into this world, bringing beings into this world as our children? Could we be willing to acknowledge that we can connect with them in so many different ways that we don't have to bring them through us as children, that that can be a choice, that can be one of many of the possibilities that we can play with. And it also really feels like there is a a yearning or a desire, not from a dramatic sense, but just like, hey, we can do this now. It's really, there's an excitement that we can be connecting and communicating on a much greater basis. And we can be collaborating with them. And I, I get that that's been the big request all along. Why are we separating us from them? Why are we making it impossible to collaborate with non-embodied beings just because we're here on the planet Earth playground? And the generativeness of that and the, oh, the, 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 just the word that comes is like the greatness of that frequency, like the, the, the multiple ways that that could be a support to all of us is that's, that's a place that I don't think we can even relate to. It's just so vast and amazing. So what could you do this week to just play with this? If this is something that's up for you or has been up for you, um, if it just kind of fries your brain and you would like some assistance or support, you can reach out. My link is right here on the podcast page. Um, but for you to just explore your willingness to be aware of the beings if they want to be your babies, you get to have a conversation and you get to have a choice. And how could this allow you to be lining up even more with your essence and living it every day? <laughs> so just explore and enjoy. And we'll be back next week for more Aligning Divine. Thank you, my beautiful friends. Thank you for listening to Aligning Divine radio show. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your essence and living it every day.